All right, everyone, it's really funny because Steven Crowder, for the most part, is, is a comedic figure. He, he doesn't do the straight analysis sort of thing that I do, where sometimes I pepper a video with jokes, especially if it's about Biden, because, I mean, he is a joke, so it's low-hanging fruit. Uh, but he's, he's predominantly got a comedy show. Uh, and, and sort of a, a, a semi-mainline format with a crew and everything else. And it's funny because he has a huge audience, and so he's constantly facing attacks by craftivists that are trying to cancel him for making, like, a body joke. Um, you know, they've done this to, to other commentators. Sargon's another perennial target, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, and a few others. And, and the funny thing is this. Uh, right now, Media Matters and a bunch of other leftists are trying to cancel Steven Crowder for racist comments about black farmers. Now, keep in mind the context of why this would be a funny story. Right now, the Biden administration is literally attempting to earmark billions of dollars to people simply because of the color of their skin to try to get them into a career field that is dying, <laughs> number one, home farming uh, as opposed to corporate farming, definitely on the decline. Uh, uh, and, and, and Crowder was making a joke, or I think, I think one of the people on his show, rather. Uh, and the joke was basically about, well, why would black people want to farm? Wasn't that the problem for, for hundreds of years? And it's an allusion to, you know, cotton fields, plantation agriculture, and shit like that. Well, that's hilarious. The point stands. It's not even wrong. That's a, here's, the, here's how you make a funny, and this is why the left typically isn't funny. The funny part is, it's almost like grave humor. It's almost like it, it's mournful, it's rueful. You, you, you've got mirth and merriment off the backs of a very sensitive and, and bad time period in which people are suffering, and you're basically making the point, here's the Democratic Party, which was the party of the Klan and, and segregation and stuff, by the way. And, and that is true. I realize, yeah, yeah, the party shifted under the Southern strategy, and they switched places and all that other horse shit uh, by people who know little to nothing about U.S. history. We'll get past that for the moment. It is ironic that Democrats are trying to get black people into the farm fields. Uh, and, and, and that's why it's funny. It's an irony. <laughs> it's, it's amusing that that's the case because of the situation and the party that's making the suggestion. Now, of course, in my own analysis, I simply say the fact that the federal government is taking taxpayer money from me, from you, and everyone else to literally give to people based on their skin color is purely wrong. It's not going to solve racism. It's, by the way, not going to uplift a single black person. Going into farming is probably not a great idea. There are exceptions. You want to do a little home farm as a side hustle? Like, if I were to expand my garden and grow a bunch of vegetables and have, have a pickling operation or something, but is one person doing that on eh, a quarter acre or something like that, it's vastly different. That's like a tourist, like a cottage industry sort of thing. If you're trying to get individuals, again, based on the color of their skin, to buy up 50 acres, get in debt every single year to buy their seeds and hope for a good harvest, and require cock-sucking the government and taking its subsidies if there's not a good season, that's not a stable career. There's a reason why few people want to be farmers. You got some farm family, they have 10 kids. One of those kids might be interested in, in selling off part of the farm and, and doing cottage industry or something. The rest of them, they want to move to a city or a different state. They want to go to some other town. They don't want to be a fucking farmer. I don't blame them, by the way. And by the way, this is the opposite of trying to offend farmers. I respect them greatly. You work harder than most people in, in the economy. But you get shit for it. The Democrats normally... By the way, the Democrats are the party that looks at, like, rural farmers and shit like that out in fucking Wyoming or something and says, oh, those rubes that always vote Republican... They don't go out and visit them. They give a fuck about farms. Look at the state of Vermont. Great example. We, we were once ma a major agricultural muscle 100 fucking years ago, back when the tree lines were way, way up in the mountains because all the foothills were being grazed by sheep. By the way, there's almost no old-growth forest left in Vermont. Tourists come and say, oh, the trees are beautiful. Look how big they are. Now, there's nary a tree there that's over 80 years old. You realize that, correct? Tourists, of course, don't. Uh, <laughs> and, and they're disappearing. Why? Yeah, they're being taxed out of existence. Why the fuck would you... If Biden cares about black people, he'd say, hey, I'll pay you not to become a farmer. There's a joke for Crowder. Anyway, that rant aside, uh, cancel culture's wrong, number one. Uh, it's, it's unethical in every way. Him making a joke about black farming and, and overlapping it with plantation agriculture, not only is it... It's funny because the people that are offended are, are never black. 
You'll notice this. Virtual, I don't see uh, uh, virtually any craptivistic firm, DLM members or something, uh, that is run by someone who is actually a person of color. And, and it's funny because they use the term colored people and that's considered racist, but people of color is literally the accepted term. I'm failing to see the fucking difference. They mean exactly the same thing. It's just a different order to the words that you're using. I, I don't, they're not upset. Media Matters is. Who runs Media Mutterers? <laughs> is, it, is it Louis Farrakhan? I don't think so. Uh, or, or some leftist academic, you know, blue verified badge on Twitter. Uh, and they always seem to be white individuals, for the most part. That seems to be the, the going trend. That's where 95% of the outrage comes from. Sort of like the Karens of cancel culture. Trying to, you know, hunt people down because they wore a mask or something like that. Oh my god, you're going to kill grandma. Uh, uh, there, there's a strong racial component to it. I think it overlaps with suburban living. I think that the suburbs have fried people's minds. You know, they, they got the 4G network and, and, and all the, the Wi-Fi and shit, and it's slowly making them crazy. Uh, maybe you should move to the ghetto. A healthier upbringing in some cases. The suburbs suck dick. Uh, Steven Crowder... If, if he's cancelled, and, and you can look at Bellwethers, and this is my thoughts as an independent content creator, someone who uses similar platforms, has at least fundamentally similar style of content creation, you know, videos and so forth. If Steven Crowder, who is predominantly a comedic figure, who is making sarcastic, biting, and in this case, true remarks about black farmers, about how racist this fucking program is, number one, but also how ironic it is, given the historical backdrop of black farming, which is true. I mean, it's, it's objective. That's why it's funny. If he gets canceled, well, there's a hell of a lot of other people on the chopping block. And I think it would, at that point, I think it would put me on the cutting edge of commentary uh, if that class of people were removed, where it's, it was more comedic, therefore it's actually in some cases less edgy. It's a fucking joke. Uh, whereas I'm not joking when I do my commentary, generally, again, unless it's about Beijing, Biden, or Pelosi, because they're walking jokes, low-hanging fruit, um, it would be bad for content creation in general. I don't think Crowder should be canceled. By the way, there are plenty of left-wing comedians, none of which are actually funny. Uh, they say and do edgy shit all the time. It usually boils down to them making a pee joke about Trump or talking about his duty or his dick or something like being small or something. It's no longer funny because it's not, you know, 2017 anymore. Uh, but they exist. You know, under different circumstances, you know, 20 years ago or something, you might have considered them more edgy. What Crowder's saying would have been a guffaw fest. When are these people, by the way, are you going to try to cancel Howard Stern? Hell, he still makes commentary like that. <laughs> and he's way less edgy than he was in the 90s or the 2000s. There are so many people that do, like, talk radio, comedy, and stuff like that that go far beyond this. But the whole point is to break the taboo. That is comedy. To be funny, you have to say something edgy that would bother people. You're saying in a comedic context, sometimes in a self-deprecatory manner. That is comedy. Comedy is... Otherwise, you are left with puns and dad jokes that are only funny because they are anti-humor. That's the whole fucking, fucking point. That's about all. Peace out.